Hello, in this little section, I'm going to strip the engine down first of all, and then we'll look at the gearbox. Everything got a bit messy as I was building it, so we'll start off by getting rid of some of Thomas, which will leave us with this body. Now, I think this is quite interesting because it sort of shows my working process, and how I thought I wanted to uh, secure the body on top of the engine block. So, essentially, these two sides glued together, and this just balances quite nicely, and this tinker, there's a screw that runs through the entire body, and holds the entire lot together as a unit. It's quite elegant. So, let's get rid of the engine base, both parts. I've got some spurious wheels here, because we had a couple of goes at redesigning them. Let's get rid of the buffers. Irrelevant. And what we are left with is kind of the interesting mechanism. My first attempt at building a gearbox, I demonstrate working. But this was a limitation of the 3D printer. So the ridges on these herringbone gears are very close together. My printer cannot achieve uh, one mil accurately, and the two gears did not mesh at all. So I went from this scale to this scale, which was printable, and this is the version we saw functioning. So our, my 3D printer is an end of three, and two mil spacing was printable and printed with relative accuracy. Oh, this didn't work because it's driven by a worm gear motor, and worm gear motors are incredibly lossy, and they lose a lot of their energy in the actual mechanism, as it's essentially, um, there's a lot of friction between the worm and the primary drive gear. I deleted a lot as I went, I wasn't planning on making this video, uh, to be totally honest, I was just going to do a complete body video, but it's, it's interesting to see the process of the different things I tried and failed at. Um, so these are the original basic bodies that I've just dragged and dropped and copied in. So originally... Originally the motor block was supposed to sit in this space here, and this screw holder was supposed to just hold it in position, but that method didn't work. That was amazing. It works! So I tried multiple variations, none of which worked long term, so I ended up with simple solution. This configuration is mounted on a rather interesting angle, and I've built these little sections here, which support the bar that holds the wheel and the gearbox assembly. I say gearbox, this gear assembly together. Now these gears are really interesting, and I wish somebody had told me about this sooner. I ended up using this software called GF Gear Generator which uh, is a free uh, plugin for Fusion 360 and can be downloaded free and just installed and then you restart Fusion and you just generate 90 degree bevel gears type in the relevant dimensions that you're aiming for, the modules I had a couple of goes at this, I'll be honest, it was a bit trial and error before I got ones that fitted the aperture I'm not going to pretend I actually understand what any of these really mean but the result was this gearbox assembly which is just a one-to-one -one gearbox and I use this very small Pico motor, which delivers an insane amount of torque. I've finally got the new gearbox fitted. I mean, I call it gearbox. It's just two gears now. We've managed to reduce the amount of input I've had from loads of gears to two gears and a bought-in gearbox, which screams wonders about my ability as an engineer. If in doubt, just buy something. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and apply a little bit of power to it, and look at that! So that's running on 3 volts, thereabouts, happy days, and it needs gluing, but that is torquey as you like, and as I wind the voltage up, not sure how well this is coming out in the camera, but it's going like the clappers, that's at 5 volts, so genuinely very happy about that. I'm not sure how long the motor is going to actually last because it's working hard. It's not getting hot though, and with no load currently at 3.5 volts, it's drawing 20 milliamps. So not a lot of energy there. Need to square that up a little bit because it's wobbling. But no, I'm very very happy with that. It's a great result. So that's a really useful tool if anyone's working on doing this. Download this gear generator. Otherwise, AutoCAD has built-in scripts for spur gears. So I'll show how I made each gear assembly 
at the end of the video, but for now, enjoy watching uh, The Working Thomas, which I control via Bluetooth using my phone. Um, I'll produce another video later to show how I made the electronics, if people care. I understand if you don't care. Unsubscribe. See you next time. So, to generate your herringbone gears, select utilities, add-ins, scripts and add-ins, down to spur gear, and then generate, change the values as you, as you need based on your calculation, and just generate the spur gear. It's nice and big. Now, in order to make a herringbone, you have to create two sketches. First, you create a sketch on this profile using the project include the outline and click OK and it generates all these points. So we'll finish off that sketch and I will create a second sketch on this platform. But this one is orthogonal to the wheel, so it's in the Z plane. The distance particularly doesn't matter. Finish that sketch up. Now it's really straightforward. You simply go to sweep, select the sketch of the gear, and then path, select that path, and here it generates these options. So your twist angle wants to be whatever you've calculated in the meantime. See what 10 looks like. We don't want to join, we want to generate a new body. Okay, so now I've got a new body. We can go up here to bodies and we can hide. Oh, we can hide that tinker and bring that one to life. And now, in order to make it a herringbone, simply select this body and mirror. We don't want to be in faces, we want to be in bodies. Mirror the entire body about this side. Select join. And there you have it, a lovely herringbone gear with a simple centre pin. And hide that one. Oh, let's go back to solid. Now if we hide that body and go to utilities as I say this uh, this software package I really wish somebody had shown me months ago because it made my life so much easier but you simply collect select what you want give it the inputs you're looking for worked out uh, I think I worked out 1.5 millimeters was acceptable for my printer but two millimeters was probably better and then just play around with the pressure angle to see what you like and the number of teeth required hit OK and it's a very impressive calculation. I don't know how it does it. What you've got is two automatically generated bevel gears. 